Chronicles. Thank you, singers. Praise the Lord. Y'all like my little bass singer? He's just warming up. Man. Make a bow to the people out there, man. Well, you got to nod anyway. You can get a bow, but at least he nodded at you. He's my partner, man. He, he's my hockey partner. That's what he is. Hey, that, that, yeah, Mike Pruitt, that's your fault. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. 20 and 20 of Second Chronicles. The girls were practicing tonight. I don't guess, the, are they ready? Huh? Oh, youth night. Okay, youth night. Boy, I'm excited about this. what God's doing, Brother Ernie. I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm, I'm with you. Well, I was, I was caught and twitched, too, tonight. So I decided I'd just preach both of them. And uh, now, but the song kind of uh, uh, gave me the right direction, I think. Second Chronicles 20 and 20, and there arose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army. They went before the men of war. They went before the army. You got to understand, the army was behind. And that, that, and that they should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. And when they had begun to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Syria, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. Three countries, Ammon, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Syria went against one company, country, Judah. And the enemy was smitten. But as I get through into this message, you're going to find how they were smitten. You'll find how, what happened. I'm going to preach tearing down the strongholds, Sherry. Thank you for that song. Tearing down the strongholds. Sing a chorus. Lift your hands to the Lord today. In Jesus' name. What a beautiful name. Hallelujah. We thank you today, Lord. The name of Jesus Christ, Thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful Hallelujah. name. Thank you, Lord. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name. Father, bless this message and the message. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Thank you. You can be seated. Appreciate you standing. We have an enemy. We have an adversary. The enemy of our soul is known in many different ways. The scripture calls him an adversary. It calls him a liar. And he calls him the father of lies. He's called Satan. And he's called the devil. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He has been known as an angel of light. In 1 Peter 5 and verse 8, Peter said, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, here he's called a roaring lion, or as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. We're in a battle tonight. This world is in a battle. Young, old, rich, and poor. We are in the crosshairs of the enemy. He would love to stop the move of God that you and I are feeling even in the service tonight. He would like to put a, a stop on it. He does not want a move of God. He doesn't want God's people to get close to God. He doesn't want God's people to enjoy church. 
He wants to drag people down. He wants to destroy people. He's a destroyer. He's an accuser of the brother. He's a liar. He's an adversary. He's a, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he has set up strongholds against God's people. He's come against the church and, and God's people. He's come against this assembly. He's come against every assembly that calls by the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 3, Satan came in the form of a serpent. He came to Adam and Eve, speaking subtle words, lying words to deceive Eve, and he done it. He came to destroy their, their uh, experience with God. Because you see, in the cool of the day, the Bible said that God would come walking in the garden. And he would come to fellowship men and, and the man and woman that he had created. He came that they could have a close relationship with him. The devil recognized that right off. And, and so he came uh, uh, to Eve and he deceived her and, and he lied to her. And, and he told her that God was not good to her. He told her that God was withholding good things from them and, and that what, that God was, was, uh, was uh, holding back and, and was not allowing them to have what they could have and, and he fed all the stuff into her ears and he convinced her that she was uh, being uh, being uh, 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 missed whatever she she wasn't getting everything that God had for him and, and she did he deceived her and she partook of a, of a, tr a fruit and, and I don't know what it was I, I got my ideas uh, but she partook of this fruit and and when she did the Bible says she took it to her husband and let me just say this husbands and, and and mom or, or my husbands and dads uh, and granddads, uh, she took the fruit to Adam, but he didn't have to partake of it. He had an option. He could have said, uh -uh. not today, Jose. He could have said, woman, did you disobey God? He could have called her on the carpet. He could have took that situation. He could have reversed it. It almost tells me he wanted to partake of that fruit. I don't, I don't partake of nothing that I don't want to do. I, I'm, I'm old enough and been around long enough. If I don't want to do it, I ain't going to do it. My would leave me alone. If I don't want to, I won't. If I don't to, I will. And so here it is. The deceiver come. Deceived Eve. Lied to her. And she deceived Adam, lied to him, telling the same stuff. They partook of it. Their eyes were open. They were naked, and they saw they were naked. Shame happened. The devil come at them. Listen carefully to me. I'm not going to be here all night. The devil came at them. And then they, they thought, Adam thought, well, I need to, we need to cover ourselves up, cover our bodies. So they took some... Uh, some fig leaves or something of that sort and, and sewed together and covered their cell. And then that day in the cool of the day when God came back that time, he said, Adam, where are you? know, he wasn't saying, Adam, where are you at? He was saying, Adam, look at you now. Where are you now, Adam? You done, you've been deceived. You partook of something I told you not to. He knew where Adam was at. He knew what tree was behind. He knew where he was at in the briar patch. He knew all about Adam. He wasn't saying, where are you on location? He was saying, look at you, boy. You're a mess. You know, if you'd have just listened to me, things would have been different. I want to tell you something tonight, children. If you don't listen to God, things will be different in your life. There's been people walked out of the house of God, walked away from God, walked away Away from the ministry, walked away from the church, and they're a mess. Their life's a mess. Their kids are a mess. Their grandkids are a mess. Are you hearing me? And if they stayed with God, if they stayed in the house of God, they might have had problems, but they wouldn't be in the mess they're in. Adam was in a mess. He had messed up with God. Now he don't have anybody he can call on. He done messed up with Eve because he's probably madder than a wet hen at her for what she did. Are you hearing me? And now he's in a mess. How many of you tonight have walked away from God and you're in a mess? Satan came in the coup in the, uh, as a serpent with sub, subtle words. Now I skipped that class. 
in school, but I believe that meant deceiving words. Deceived her. How many have ever feel you don't have to raise your hand, ever felt like you were deceived by the enemy at one time or another? He came in the form of a snake. That was the first time we meet him. There he was. Satan will steal lie. He'll steal deceive. He wants to sink his teeth in you. He wants to drag you down. That's why Peter warns us in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober. He ain't talking about that kind of sober. He's talking about your brain. Keep a sober attitude. Don't get drunk in your mind. Don't let the enemy feed you a bunch of junk. Be sober. You see, a drunk man don't think right. A drunk man can't think. You know, you take a drunk man, he thinks he can do anything. And he can't do very much of nothing besides mess up. Oh, policeman says, you don't need to be driving, drinking. Oh, I can handle it. And he can't even find the floor with both hands. Come on, he thinks he can do it. He's a drunk man. Get him out of the car. Police officers, get him out of the car. He tells you he ain't drinking. He can't even stand up. Walk the line. What line? Oh, you understand? How many fingers do I have up? What hand? You know, you, you understand? But he thinks he can do it. He's not sober. He's not thinking right, Ernie. He's not thinking right. And Peter's talking about your mind being drunk. You don't think right when the enemy's shoving stuff at you. You're not thinking right. The devil can deceive you. You're not thinking about it. You're thinking, well, maybe that's true. Maybe, maybe this is right. Maybe that is not right. And so Peter said, be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour you. He wants to devour you and you and you and you. He wants to, he's got a devouring spirit. He's not besides, besides a lying spirit. He's got a devouring, devising spirit. He will deceive you and drag you down and make you feel all kinds of stuff. He'll just make you feel unimportant. He'll make you feel like your wife don't care, your husband don't care, your kids don't care. All the kids want is me to die and get out of the way. And, you just do, and that's what the devil will tell you. And he's a deceiver. He's a deceiver. He set up a stronghold against the church. He wants to destroy this first United Pentecostal church in Covington. He wants to destroy the ministry the young ministers. He wants to destroy you. But I come to tell you, Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm here to tell you tonight, we don't win. I don't look to the back of the book and I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Not too long on the road to glory. And you might say, I'm a beginner. I'm just the world's oldest teenager. I'm a beginner. I'm a winner. I'm going to win this race. I got, I got running the race on my mind. I'm not going to get there as fast as you, Ernie. I can't run as fast. But don't slow down. That's right. That's right. I'll run over you. Because I'm going to keep running. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep pastoring and preaching as long as God will let me put one foot in front of the other. I, my foot's hurting tonight. But you know what? If I was sitting over there in that chair listening to one of these guys preach, my foot would still be hurt. So what do I care about it? I got a big old bunion on the left foot. The doctor told me three or four years ago when he'd done the surgery on this one, he said, to, how about the left one? I said, well, it's not hurting. He said, well, we'll leave it alone. Now, I hate like everything tomorrow. Do I have to call him and say, guess what, doc? It's hurting. <laughs> but I'm going to keep preaching. Yes. If Jimmy Crumb yes. can just drag yes. and barely get up here yes with Ernie holding him up and walk over here. And that, who am I and what am I doing? Come on, somebody. The devil's got strong holds up. He's trying, he's got machine gun bunkers. He's just waiting on us. He's got a, oh, he wants to sink his fangs in us. He wants to drag us down. Peter told me to be sober. Preacher Creasy, be sober. Let me tell you, 
The devil is out there. He's doing all he can. He wants to devour you. He's a, as a roaring lion. So how am I going to make it? How am I going to live for God? I'm fighting all these battles, preacher. You done, you're old. You done fought all them battles. Let me tell you something. Don't you kid yourself. I get up every morning fighting a battle. I go to bed every night fighting a battle. Are oh, you not hearing me? Just because I'm old and been in the battle a long time and got gray hair and all that, that, that devil don't leave me alone. He keeps pushing me. He keeps dragging at me. He keeps lying to me. You're not hearing me, are you? Don't turn my mic down. I want to get loud or I wouldn't scream. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the enemy is like a roaring lion trying to drag us down. Hallelujah. How am I going to make it? How am I going to make it? Let me tell you how I'm going to make it. I'm going to do just like Jehoshaphat. I'm going to get me some singers. I'm going to get my praise group up here. And I'm going to get them some tambourines. And I'm going to send them out into the battle. You say, well, that ain't very much, very fair. Well, I think it is. God told the choir in Judah. He said, I want you to take the choir. Jehoshaphat, get your choir together. Get them all organized. And let the army get behind them. I ain't going to need the army in this battle. I just want some singers. You're not hearing me preach, are you? You're not listening. Everybody in the whole camp, everybody thought, man, that is a great idea. Yes. Except the choir. Yes. <laughs> they didn't think it was such a good idea. He said, you ordain some singers. Uh -huh. Sounds stupid, don't uh -huh. Man, we're not going to a concert. We're going to war. Yes. We're not having a, 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 a religious concert, Joshua or, or uh, Jehoshaphat. We're fighting a battle. We, That's right. You can't send us out there. We don't have a gun. I don't have any ammo, ammo, ammo. I don't have a sword. I don't have a spear. I ain't even got a shield. I ain't got nothing. But here it is. Here it is. Joshua said, get your stuff together. Get everything together. And said, I'm going to send you into the battle. And when they went into the battle, they started singing praises to holiness. They started singing praise to God. And all of a sudden, ambush. You ever think about where the ambush was come from? The army's way back there. I mean, if I'd been in that army, I'd say, not a problem, Doc. You let them go right here. I, I'm not selfish. Let them go first. The army's way back there. Where did the ambush come from? From each other. Because when they went into the camp, I'm skipping a lot of good preaching. When they went into the camp, they found dead people everywhere. They had turned on one another. And keep, go ahead. Now you got to get your microphone. You got to make some rant. Amen. 20, 20 and 23. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. Okay, we got two, two countries standing up against Mount Seir. Utterly to slay and destroy them to and win. To slay and to destroy them. Uh -huh, and now the singers are still just singing, marching, won't we have a time when we get over yonder? <laughs> and shaking that tambourine and, and playing music and just singing holiness and, and praising the Lord. And, and all of a sudden, there's a war going on, yeah. but Judah is not in the war. No, sir. Go ahead. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, yeah. everyone helped to destroy another. Everyone helped to destroy another. The other two countries just begin to fight one another. Is yeah. that awesome or what? Yeah, it's a God thing. Listen. And when right. Judah came toward the watchtower. And when Judah came toward the watchtower. In the wilderness. In the wilderness. They looked unto the multitude. They looked unto the multitude. And behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth and none escaped. <laughs> I can visualize it. There had to be, Harry, old buddy, old pal, two men left. Yes. Out of all this conglomeration, there had to be, in the end of the battle, there had to be at least two left. And so they turned on one another and killed one another. Now you know. I can quit preaching right now. Because you know now where the ambush was coming. They ambushed one another. Can you understand what God just did for Judah? 
can you can you understand what God just done? He just destroyed the stronghold of the enemy. He just made a mark of the enemy. He said, you're not even going to have to fight in this battle. I, he said, set yourself and see the salvation of the Lord in another place. He said, you won't even have to fight. He made mockery of the enemy of Judah. Let me tell you something. If you worship the Lord... If you'll give everything to God, God will make mockery of the enemy that's trying to destroy you. The enemy that's trying to destroy your family, your children, your home, your job. The enemy is trying to destroy everything about you. If you put your mind, if you make it up in your mind, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to live for God. Come hell or high water, I'm going to live for God. I'm telling you, I'm putting myself out front that God will destroy the enemy and make a mockery of him, and he'll destroy himself. He'll tear down. His stronghold will be torn down. Praise God. Man, I didn't destroy these numbers. <laughs> Serpents in Israel's day fought against Israel. Satan knew about the serpent because he was called the serpent. This attack on this camp of Israel was rough. It was real. It was alive. But God turned defeat into victory. That's awesome. That's awesome. I've had him do it for me. So have you. The serpent came into the camp. And no one was saved. The attack. He attacked Israel. He attacked God's people. They began to bite people. You remember the story? They began to bite people. People began to die. The enemy was killing God's people. Moses went to pray. Moses talked to God. God said, I got your answer. Put a serpent, a brazen serpent, up on a pole and extend it up in the, into the air. And tell Israel, when they get bit by a serpent, a, a venomous serpent, look on the serpent on the pole and they'll live. Now, that was... Why couldn't he just say, I'll heal him? He said, look at the serpent. And then if you go to, I believe it's the Hebrew writer, he said, no, it was one of the Gospels Jesus was speaking. He said, if I be lifted up, he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And he said, and if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I'm just telling you tonight that your answer is in praising God. Getting a hold of God. Maybe Israel had a right to be discouraged from time to time, maybe. Marin was, was, had died. Things was happening. They'd been attacked by their enemy. I'm hitting several, two or three different places now. Marin had died. They was attacked by the enemy. Their armies had defeated them pretty good but at a high cost. And the Bible said they was, their traveling was hard. Things was not doing good. Sometimes it seems we just can't make it. Sometimes it's hard to get from Sunday to Sunday. We're going to try Wednesday. Now that, that's always between Sunday and Sunday. Let's try a good Wednesday night church if you're having that problem. I know some work on Wednesday nights. I understand that. I understand that. It's not a sin to be discouraged, but it's sure a sin to stay there. I'm, I'm preaching. I'm going, I'm going somewhere. It was not their discouragement that got them. It was how they reacted to the discouragement. They murmured. They complained against Moses and against God. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Were there not bread and water? And we hate this light red. Discouragement can attack all of us. 
it attacked John the Baptist. He said he, from the prison, one of his disciples came to minister to him, and he said, go ask this Christ. He'd heard about him. Said, you go ask him, is he the Christ, or should we look for another? They went and told Jesus, they said, John Baptist sent us to you to ask you, are you the Christ, or do we look for another? He said, you go tell John. He turned around, Brother Ernie, and he started healing people. He healed in blinded eyes, and he healed all kinds of stuff. And he said, now you go tell John what you saw. Go, go tell John. So they went back and told John what they saw. And John knew right on, this is the Christ. I'm still preaching about tearing down the strongholds. See, the enemy blames strongholds against us. They, they complain, but God sent deliverance. Don't you love him tonight? Moses went to prayer. God said, make that fire serpent. Put it on the pole. The people will be okay. When Moses lifted up the serpent, and they looked, they lived. I heard somebody preach a sermon, look and live. So now, now I'm going to preach my sermon. How do we overcome Satan? How can we tear down the strongholds that he's placed in our lives from day to day? Jesus said to Moses, lift up the serpent. The other writer said it, Jesus speaking, if I be lifted up, I'll draw me into me. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, if you lift up Jesus, you overcome Satan. If we get close enough to Jesus, we'll overcome the enemy. You see, the enemy can't do anything with Jesus. So those strongholds that the enemy brings against us, the answer is lifting up the Lord. There's no, there's no, uh, uh, there's uh, power in our worship. That service this morning, I don't know if you recognized or not, but it was power packed. It was anointed. Those singers here tonight, that was anointed singing. Those running the aisles, they, I know they ran because I asked them to, but the Holy Spirit of God was moving in that situation. So your stronghold is defeated by your worship. You can't sit still and defeat strongholds. Strongholds are things of the devil. He uses tactics to bring about those strongholds. Jesus I, I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to take and pick the worst day of your life. Whatever you feel like it is, you take the worst day you've ever had and you turn that day into worship and to praise by worshiping God and lifting up the Lord. And I promise you, those chains that they sang about will go will fall off. I promise you. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, how many has fought the enemy this week? Be honest, be honest. You fought the enemy this week. The scripture said when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Holy Spirit, how, how does it say that? The enemy comes in like a flood. Uh, the enemy comes in like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. So if you, the worst day you've had this week, the battle that you're fighting, if you'll lift up Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you something, he'll lift up that standard against you. One, one uh, uh, writer, one uh, preacher quoted that scripture, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit will lift up a standard against him. Uh, he was saying, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit lifts up the standard. It's not us, it's the Spirit of God that lifts up the standard. Uh, the Bible tells the story in Chronicles, I've just read it to you, about the victory that Judah had and never fired a shot. Because God sent ambushments among the children of Judah and rescued them from the strongholds of their enemy, and, and God gave them victory over their enemy just like he said he would. Second Chronicles 20, 16 through 22 tells the story about what God done 
They rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers. That just blew me away. That blew me away. And the singers went forth, worshiping and praising God. So how do I defeat strong? How do I overcome what the enemy is coming against me with? You do that by lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. The strongholds. Everybody fights them. Everybody fights them. Come on, the piano, Rebecca. Everybody fights them. Lifting up the name of the Lord. Even when you don't feel like it. You say, oh, that's easy for you to preach. Why? Why would it be easy for me that it would be you? I mean, we're cut out of the same cloth. Sammy Scott used to say, I was cut out right, but I was sold up wrong. <laughs> so so uh, we're, cut, we're all cut out together. So why would it be easier for me than it would you? Or why would it be easier for you than it would me? If we will tear down, if we lift up Jesus, he'll tear down the strongholds in our life. We'll, the devil will be defeated in our life. Lifting up the name of Jesus. Stand with me. God bless you. I told you what he's going to preach all night. Now, if you've got a stronghold, if there's a stronghold in your mind, you know what it is. I don't know what it is, but you do. If there's something that you're battling, some kind of a battle, it could be a spiritual battle, it could be a whatever type battle. If there's something there, I challenge you to bring it to this front up here with all the other saints of God and lift up the name of Jesus in worship you don't have to run the aisle and anything like that. If you'll just give it to him, he'll tear down those strongholds. While they're singing, bring it to the Lord. Gather around the front.